you may recall, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna overlap a little bit by a few of the, the end slides from last week just to, to get us back on page. Um, so last week I was mostly talking about kind of how do we even make a soft interface technologically? How like what are the kinds of actuators we can use? Um, I didn't really talk about sensing. There are a lot of sensing methods as well. I <laughs> tend to personally find them less interesting, but that's is actually a very um, mature and highly developed field of research as well. Um, also, I want to say that uh, it, it might be a little bit disappointing to the folks that are interested in fabric that we're doing this fabric module first, and therefore we're not really going to do like on hands-on actuated fabrics. Um, but you know, I am around if this is a if this is a topic that is interesting to you, or if you want to learn about some of the technologies I haven't talked about, like the sensing or whatever, please just reach out to me like this. <laughs> that's all in scope. It's just kind of because of the remote thing we've been steering a little bit more in this direction. Um, so you know, what's, what's the point of all of this, right? What can we do all with all of this? And I said, Oh, you need we can make reactive wearables. It's a very common application for um, soft interfaces uh, or for soft actuated fabric stuff. There's broader interfaces that aren't necessarily a wearable per se. I think that these still often shine when they're in kind of a body centric context. Um, and then there's also this cool, weird computational exploration through materials. Um, like I said, this is just in here to like be like, wow, did you know about this? It's cool. Um, but for the focus of the rest of the projects I'm going to show you, um, it's really about this body as site. Um, and this is is the hook into part of why I invited Stephanie to be with us today, because um, I think her work is also very uh, body centric, but in a very different way from mine. Um, and so when I'm thinking about body as site and, and actuated stuff, one of the things I do think about is the difference between, I said this last week as well, clothing and costume and sort of on body versus worn. So this is a this is an on body interaction that isn't necessarily worn per se still cool interesting um but i think these are useful axes around which to think about on body interaction like there can be things that are on your body that aren't clothing um there can be things um that augment the way your body interacts with the world in various ways um so so to start for this, you know, there's a lot of uh, sort of on-body technologies do these augmentation type tasks. They uh, help mediate your body in the world in a way that your body cannot do on its own. And so I, I argue that clothing overall is, is an augmented, you know, interface between your body and the world. Um, costume is maybe more of a single note or narrative kind of thing, but, but clothing overall does, provides all of these different roles and to me, crucially, it really is about um, the wearer's experience as well. So this is where this is where I'm sort of pivoting into like. Uh, th this is a personal opinion. I want to be clear. I think I think that fashion a lot um, isn't often about the wearer's experience. Right? When we see fashion on a runway, it is about. Um, making beautiful forms, right, about material exploration, about shapes around the body. And often, in fact, you know, the model's job is essentially to not complain. <laughs> um, we mostly don't think about what the experience of being a model is in that context. Um, so to the extent that I'm putting a little bit of my own work in these slides, um, one project I want to touch on is this very, very silly, um, very, very partial project that I worked on with my colleague David Perry. Um, which we did remote during COVID. So these are all you know, renderings. Um, but what to, to, to just start to think about what would it even feel like to be in a garment that was moving in this way around you? I think there's all these interesting questions of you know, the agency of the garment as potentially distinct from your own agency, right? We typically expect the t-shirt to do what we tell it to do. <laughs> Don't move, stay there, cover my body. Um, but once you start uh, bringing in actuated systems and things with a little bit of um, cleverness of their own, there are ways in which that stuff starts to maybe even work against you, but to certainly to shape the way you're seeing the world and the way the world sees you um, in ways that are maybe even uncanny or upsetting, uh, or, or maybe ways that make you feel more comfortable in the world or more powerful. And I think that this is fundamentally why there's a lot of interesting work in this area is that it 
it tends to be about these sort of personal experiences of being in the world. And so I've curated um, a little bit of work about that. Actually, first, let me show you though, um, I have some slides that are like, oh, I just I gotta show you these projects because they're, they're the kinds of things you're gonna see. So um, this social body lab, they do a bunch of work. There's a whole lab, they do a bunch of projects um, about exactly this kind of social mediation, right? Let's put some machines between a wearer and some onlookers and like, what is it like to be that person and to interact with that person in this context? Um, their, machine, their stuff is very delightfully like, um, mechatronic while still 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 being soft. I really love their aesthetic. Um, uh, Anouk Wiprecht is an artist that like really pushes um, that kind of thing. Also like sort of machines worn on the body. A lot of her stuff is very antagonistic. It's very about like keeping somebody away from you or like um, almost, I mean, this is a spider dress, right? And it, and it has opinions of its own. If, if it doesn't like somebody else, like start spiking or whatever. Um, this is a, uh, partially design fiction, partially real uh, sort of proposal for um, air filtration garments. Um, so it's a sort of futurist work about, um, you know, how might we need to modify our bodies in the future. Um, and uh, Benaz Farahi, I'm probably pronouncing that name wrong, Benaz Farahi does also a lot of these very um, elegant and subtle kind of like all over body undulations and, and frills and things that are um, honestly, a lot of them don't even look like they're real. They have like a very like high computational aesthetic of, of how motion moves throughout them. Um, I'm gonna point out something though about these last four slides. Did you notice anything about these slides? Um, maybe this one's a little bit of an exception, but these three, they're all like, gleaming white surfaces on gleaming white models, <laughs> um, which is a, is a particular way to do fashion, right? And it is often, a lot of times, the way that we do fashion. Um, we sort of isolate the garment as its own thing, and the body who's wearing it is, um, you know, it's, it's basically a mannequin. We don't even see her whole face. So I wanted to show some work that gets away from that a little bit, that is a little bit more personal, that is about the body that is inside the suit suit, costume, clothing, object, whatever. Um, also, I threw this PS in while Lenning was talking last week, but I, I stand by it, um, which is another way of thinking about augmentation, right, about this idea of bettering a human body is that we're merging a body with technology. Um, I don't think that's a bad definition, but I really encourage you to be critical about what you think of as technology. Um, clothing is already technology, right? Clothing is already a human designed intervention into the world. Uh, and so a lot of these projects are just kind of pushing at things that are already happening, just amplifying them or, or bringing them to the front. So that's a, that's a kind of a lens that I find important as well. Okay, personal and contextual soft interfaces, personal and contextual soft interfaces. And this is just kind of a zoo. I have a bunch of cool projects to show you. So I'm going to show them to you kind of quickly. Um, this is a touchstone project that y'all need to know about. <laughs> uh, project, lifetime, life of work. Um, Nick Cave is a, oh, come on, Google Slides. Oh, that's terrible. Hang on, sorry. Um, Nick Cave is a famous and very cool artist. If you have not heard of him, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, his work often takes the form of these very dynamic, large um, costumes, kind of clothing that kind of obscure the body, but also kind of amplify it. So there's a lot of stuff around like secondary motion, a lot of like fringe that gets flung around as he moves and a lot, a lot, a lot of that mediating of filtering what somebody sees and what somebody doesn't see. Um, I think it's really important to know that Nick Cave is a black man in the US and has explicitly said that his soundsuit work began as a reaction to wanting to hide or filter or mediate how he is perceived in the world. Um, I think there's also echoes of various um, aesthetic forms here that he would have access to as a black man that would not necessarily be a, like a mainstream US aesthetic. Um, and all of this is integrated into these pieces that um, 
you know, can be read on multiple levels. So th this is like one of the most important actuated fabric works, in my opinion. They're not literally actuated. They're not mechatronically actuated. The motion is all coming from um, sort of amplifications of, of the body's existing motions. Um, so like I said, this came out of my understanding, Nick's desire to change some things about how his body was in the world, um, which is a theme we also see in um, trans works. So this is a paper by Oliver Hampson where he's doing a bunch of interviews with uh, transgender and transsexual participants in workshop settings about sort of what are the technologies that would be useful, helpful, comforting um, in for a trans person in today's society. Um, these are not all about clothing, but several of them are. It is a repeating theme um, in this work that what if I had a garment that could, you know, if I'm gender fluid to change as I'm changing, or if I need to be slightly more stealth, or if I need to, if I want to be able to sort of unwind after work, or, or, or how can my clothing support my body in the world as it interacts with sort of societal expectations and also my own understanding of my own gender. Um, so these are these kind of funny little sketches. Um, the closest I found to an artist who's actually done this in reality, um, this is a student work. I don't know anything else about this student, but it's a, it's a cool little mechatronic wearable project that is a uh, actuated binder. So this is a garment that can be a, a tighter fit to, to bind the wearer's breasts down, or can also loosen up to be more breathable um, when the wearer wants it to be so. That's cool. I certainly get the impression from reading this project page that this is absolutely a personal project for this, for this designer, that this is something that they made because they wanted it. Um, and I think that that can be really powerful. Similarly, this artist, oh man, I wish I actually knew this artist in person. <laughs> her work is so cool. Um, Chen Zhao, go to her webpage. There is so much good textiles work here. Um, I pulled just a single project out. Um, this is a project which really deeply interrogates the aesthetics of fabric. It's all about these sort of frills and stretchy, weird, soft surfaces um, crossed over with some of the artists um, thoughts or wonderings um, about sexuality, about um, Chinese historical fashion and sort of how that intersects with aristocracy and and social roles. And, you know, this is an incredible, I mean, you look at these, you know, like these are incredibly beautiful pieces um, and they're coming out of so many different sort of personal and cultural roots for this artist. Um, I didn't talk, I'm, I'm doing okay. Okay, uh, we're gonna scoot. <laughs> another person who's like, oh, you, got, you have to actually just go to her website. Hannah Perner Wilson is one of the biggest names in uh, e-textiles in particular, sort of in hobbyist soft circuitry. Uh, she has so, 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 so many projects, um, really impossible to enumerate. But some of the projects fit in this category of these kind of on-body laboratories that she makes for herself. So these are wearable garments that are intended to augment her own artistic and technological process. So this in particular is a, a vest, I guess, for wearing while she's doing electronics work. So it incorporates, I think, like a power supply and a multimeter and an oscilloscope as sort of on body at the ready tools for her to use as she's working in her workshop. Like I said, there's a whole category of this work. She also has stuff for like, what if I want a 3D print in the jungle, but I also want that to be a backpack that I wear on my body. Um, so she's thinking a lot about like how to augment herself as a maker, right? And, and this is very sort of cyclical process because she'll make these things to make the other things. Um, and she documents it all very, very thoroughly. Um, a similar project about augmenting one's sort of maker self, making one's own tools for one's own practice um, is this ongoing project by Imogen Heap. Um, you may have heard of her. She's a musician. I think she's a very good musician. Um, and she, I mean, she's a, a fairly well-known musician. Um, and she has this whole project about making these gloves um, to help her do live performances. This has been going on for like a decade and a half, I think. Um, my favorite talk of hers on this topic is the one that's linked, but she's given a bunch of talks about it. Um, 
And it really is about like, what is the wearable that Imogen wants for the performances that she does um, in the kinds of contexts that she does them. Um, and it starts to talk about like, what are the gestures that she finds natural? How does she move around on a stage? How does that all reflect back in the design of the gloves? Uh, also, these gloves are open source and you can buy them from her. So interesting stuff. And it's like, this is like a whole side practice to her mainline gig, which is being a famous musician, which is interesting. Um, I'm not gonna talk as much about prosthetics because <laughs> Stephanie is going to, um, but there's also some really wonderful sort of prosthetics work out in the world. This is um, an artist or a group of artists that does this alternative limb project. Um, they're not mostly very mechatronic or very soft, but they are interrogating what does it mean to make an object that is going to become part of your body sometimes. I think even the people for whom they make these limbs do not necessarily see them as like an everyday limb. They're special occasions, they're fancy limbs. They're limbs that are appealing to some particular and unique emotional and logistic need of the wearer. So this one's like a, I don't know, James Bond hand that has like matches and a flashlight and God knows what gadgets are up in there. It's pretty fun. Um, Similarly about these kinds of like tool stuff, um, Lee Blalick is a super cool artist. I tried to get them to come <laughs> today. They are teaching their own class at NYU, so couldn't be here, unfortunately. Um, but again, a lot of stuff about performance and how can one augment one's own body to make the kind of performance work um, that they want to make. Scoot, scoot. Laura Davendorf, my hero and cool research collaborator. Um, this is deliberately evoking the sound suits, right? That I showed you, the Nick Cave sound suits, the very first slide I showed you. Um, these are costumes or clothing that are intended to be worn to uh, as part of an ASMR experience, right? So to put you in a meditative state. Um, through the kinds of choices about the soft materials and the ways that um, they have sound recording and amplifying equipment uh, woven directly into them. So it's it's a, a garment that's very personal, right? It's a garment that's very much designed by um, Laura's student Jolie alongside Laura um, for a very, very singular and specific purpose. And you can really, I think, see that even in the aesthetics of the fabric. Um, I'm just throwing this in as, as a, you should check this out too. Um, the whole research group, the Soma Design Group, um, in, I'm, I just forgot what country they're in, um, but they do a lot of this, like how do we think about, how, on a, in a rigorous research way, um, the effects of particular objects and experiences on our own bodies? Like how do we even research rigorously um, what a personal experience like this is? So if you're curious about that question, I think especially if you're coming from kind of like a a science science background where you're like, well, none of this is research. I'm like, well, it's a different kind of research. Um, there is thinking about like, how do we turn these kinds of super hyper individualized and unique experiences into research, generalized knowledge. Uh, okay. Uh, Artist worth looking into, Sputniko, on body wearable, super involved with uh, gender and personal presentation, I think. She comes up with like a specific different persona for each of these projects. Like she's always in character in these videos, which I think is um, really fascinating and inspiring. A lot of this actually, to my mind, I, I don't know if this is um, her process specifically. A lot of this very much strongly reminds me of drag work, right? Where you're picking up on some element of the human experience and then like amplifying it and making it almost absurd through the sort of over the top performance of that aspect. Um, her stuff is very gendery, also, as you can probably tell from the pictures. Um, a slightly more subtle but very similar theme, um, Annie Liu has a sequence of garments for experiencing pregnancy. Um, they're kind of positioned as empathy suits. I wouldn't be surprised if she got the funding for these by claiming that they are empathy suits. And so when I say empathy suit, I mean there's this, this kind of idea that you might be able to make a, an object that somebody could put on and feel what it is like to be in some particular way. I have, um, 
I have some kind of philosophical beef with this idea. I don't think it's likely to be very effective at actually like really understanding what it is like to be another person. Um, however, I think that the contraptions which are made to be positioned as empathy suits are often fascinating, right? Like, so in this artist's opinion, what is the feeling of being pregnant, right? Those feelings are sort of distilled into an object or a performance. Um, Lee Bull, there's three Lees in this deck. There's Lee Blalick, Lee Bull, and um, Lee Wilkins. Lee Bull is a genuinely incredible performance artist, a very long career of doing cool, weird body stuff. Just gonna leave that link. A lot of it though is particularly interrogating sort of like, what is it like to be in, uh, to put yourself in sort of these deliberately like weird or heightened places in society. Um, She's particularly reacting to social specifics of Korean society in like the 70s here, which is like something I can't even begin to parse, um, but that it is being brought into that work. Our third Lee is Lee, Wilk Lee Wilkins, who I also try to invite. Um, they do a bunch of stuff, <laughs> but their wearable stuff is often um, almost kind of idealistic. It's So this is a space suit that tracks spaceships in the, in the sky and visualizes the position um, of like the International Space Station uh, as a moving heat map on this garment. And so it's, it's almost like utopian. It's kind of a dream of being an astronaut in a certain sense, um, but as embodied in, in a very intimate, I think, um, and very personal to Lee garment. Um, they also have all these cool, weird head mounted pieces of like, put your head in the mirror void. Um, which is the kind of thing that I think you cannot possibly understand without actually experiencing it. These photographs are not doing it justice. Similarly, I have no idea what it's like to be in this thing. Um, and I'm just gonna dangle on that note with like, if you're interested in these weird head mounted devices, <laughs> you should check out this book. There's this entire book by Madeline Schwartzman about like specifically these kinds of body and face mounted experience mediators. This stuff gets a little further from what I was talking about, like soft interfaces, because they tend to be a little bit more machine-like. Um, they're less fully encompassing, but I do think that they are relevant in this, this sort of full social mediation way. Okay, that was a lot, and I did it really quickly. Um, happy to chat about literally any of these projects <laughs> with anybody, but I think unless there is a pressing concern, we should pivot to hearing from Stephanie, is there are there any pressing concerns? Uh, Maybe just uh, just a quick oh, uh, intro. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you do intro. So yeah. quick reminder is so all the slides, as you guys know, will be posted online uh, by I Stephanie. Think they already have been, actually. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, yeah. That's it. I think they already have been actually. Oh, oh great. Yeah. yeah. So because mm -hmm. yeah, really went through quick, and each of them. So uh, many links. <laughs> yeah. So it's so very links. rich. Um, and she put it, she actually did a very great curation of the relevant projects. Um, but you 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 will only get it get it deeper <laughs> if you actually check the links and watch the videos and and again, so this class um for the whole semester is gonna be a constant. Uh, conversations between the technology and also the idea, the context where the technologies are being used. That's how they uh, design her slides. Um, and when you are sitting here, right, hearing so many ideas, the most important thing you want to constantly ask yourself is, am I inspired? What is my pot potential idea? <laughs> um, and, and, and most of you guys I know are graduate students or, or senior undergrads. I have the assumption that you come in wanting to potentially identify some possible projects, maybe for your thesis or, you know, just set as a side hobby. Um, and I think this course is going to be a great opportunity. Actually, you will be forced to anyway, if you're taking it for credit, to keep thinking with the, with the technology the lab session told you or with, with the examples the lectures gave you. Uh, have your own opinions, right? Which you could you could disagree with some, you could agree with some. And one thing, uh, for example, I started to think as Leah showing all these examples, these are great and inclusive. I did notice most of the artwork, right? The artist design the art for themselves, and then they also wear them. So if you talk about inclusive design, 
it hits one aspect. We are showing a spectrum of how those uh, clothes are being used in different contexts for different purposes. But on the other hand, we also maybe crave for some needs of designing for others' bodies, not just their own bodies. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I think there are, lo there are a lot we can discuss maybe after Stephanie. I would, say, I, would love, I would love to take that on as part of the discussion later and I'll take a note because I, I, think, I think it is a really interesting um, sort of multiple lenses on that question. Um, but yeah, okay, great. Thank you. And and I think, um, you know, my goal really with this part of the slides was just to be like, there is so much work out there in the world and it is wild and weird and, and actually very different, I think, than a lot of times when people think about um, softer on body interfaces, they basically picture this stuff, which is beautiful and wonderful work, but there is a real like multiplicity of how this stuff actually, um, you know, how actual artists and designers and, uh, you know, students and such out in the world um, actually use on body stuff.